Hey everyone, how's it going? I am actually on day four uh, recovering from COVID. I don't know how I dodged it for as long as I did, but I got it and uh, I just ask that you forgive me if uh, I say some silly things due to having a bit of a foggy brain or something like that. I definitely feel it, but I did want to knock out this long form uh, deconstruction of these four photos. Uh, there will probably be more than that because uh, this will probably be 15 minutes or so of behind the scenes footage, but it's this photo, this photo, this photo, and this photo. It'll actually start um, with that one. Oop not this one, that's from a wedding. Uh, but these four photos, um, I thought this would be a good deconstruction to jump into because it is actually from a shoot where I was teaching and explaining my thoughts uh, the entire time. So that should ease up on me today, right now, in this video, having to talk too much because I don't know that I'm gonna make much sense. <laughs> but also just give you um, a good, thorough, behind the scenes sense of what I'm thinking about in the moment, stuff that I don't always realize I should be talking about when I'm sitting here with you looking at the footage you know, weeks later. So we're just gonna play pause our way through. I'm gonna start about where this photo is. Do, 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 get a folder in library. And I should be able to easily kind of uh, go through the images as I'm shooting and talking. Of course, I'm gonna to pause to say additional things as we get going, but I think we're gonna keep the desktop, the Lightroom view as a smaller thumbnail and the behind the scenes footage as the larger shot. So here we go. Let's see how this takes. So it kind of anchors everything, which I like. Um, awesome. Let me, I'm kind of liking this thing. Now nah, let's go. <clears throat> these black um, it's cool because you guys are very dark um. they were wearing black on black normally I would find something to pop what they're wearing against but I kind of liked the this really reminds me of a clothing brand I used to love called distilled DSTLD I still wear their uh, jeans to like every wedding love that brand but um, the super black uh, look I'm a big fan of. The big problem here, I'll probably explain it in a second as well, is the, the like visual noise of the numbers. If I can easily realize that those are removed later, I try and see through them as just not even being there. That number 14 in particular. Sorry, right here. You can actually just turn and face each other. <laughs> visual clutter and knowing the like, end result that you're likely to aim for, especially in editing. It's a really good skill to hone. Seeing through the fact that, yeah, there's a really ugly sticker with the number 14 on it, maybe I'll keep it, but probably not. And I'm probably gonna back up and compose as if that doesn't exist at all, because I know I can just get rid of that. You know, I'll try and avoid that if I can, but there are signs everywhere. There's outlets everywhere. You just have to see through that clutter when you're trying to like hone your composition. So <laughs> I'm just trying to make the point that there's visual clutter everywhere you look, outlets, especially in hotel rooms, not like <laughs> where we were on the street there. And uh, sometimes I just ramble about things and I am grateful that nobody calls me out on it too often. They probably just thought it was a strange language barrier. Uh, this was in Spain. <laughs> um, anyway, so, but yeah, that, you know, signs, one of my favorite movies, uh, that really um, talks about this, uh, or kind of visually represents it, I should say, is um, Wes Anderson's, the one that takes place in the hotel. Can't actually remember what it's called. Uh, whatever. Uh, but it flashes back and forward, uh, back and forth in time between a period from, I think, the like early 1900s or maybe mid 1900s to more present day or something. And you could see like the stark difference was not only the age of the building, but just signs are everywhere now. Safety signs, directional signs, all that stuff where that didn't used to be the case. I miss those days. Not that I saw them. A lot of people will be like, oh, that sign's ugly. I can't use it. It's a small step. Actually, you're perfect, uh, Philip. Sarah, can you come in really close to him? Yeah, you can actually turn toward him. No, 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 I'm on our side. Turn toward him and just hug around his arm that's closest to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can even do one hand like up on his shoulder. Do you want, yes, yes, yes. Free hand in your pocket. 
Yeah, yeah. hand up on the shoulders. Ooh, beautiful. And uh, just to help separate their shoulder a little bit. Some people, photographers might hate this, might look like she has a floating hand or something like that, but I like that it adds a little bit of separation between his shoulder and the background since it's black on black. You just kind of look at each other, lean in really, really, really close. She always starts smiling when that happens, by the way. I love it. You can actually touch heads if you want. Bring it in. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Stay right there. Okay, close. At this point, I have and no then idea can you sweep your hair just a little bit, Sarah? And I'm realizing yeah. the closer yeah. I get, the the worse I like the light on them as they are there. I don't know if we were next to an overhang or something weird. Uh, I don't know exactly what was causing the soft light to be completely overhead, and that's not what I like. Also, she has really long hair that's shading her face in a way that I don't find flattering and is just very different uh, exposure from his face, which has no hair <laughs> uh, shading it. So um, just things to keep in mind as I pivot to the position of them, looking a little more out toward the street and start playing with the prism to just create a little bit more of a brightening effect in the whole shot. You could, if you could. <laughs> I like your hair. Uh, actually, uh, Philip, can you turn and look way down this way for one? And Sarah, can you look like right at the, lean in really close to him? Yeah, yeah, ooh, I love that. Hold, hold, hold. This might actually be a good uh, prism opportunity. Although I like this Ready for it? Ding. It's a shame I didn't get a better catch like I used to carry it in my pocket, but it just looks super awkward. <laughs> All right. Perfect. I really wanted that van right in this <laughs> reflection. <laughs> Beautiful, guys. That's awesome. Hold that, hold that. So good. Mostly the only the other funny thing about prisming around like 50 people is getting all the feet not in the shot. So yeah, the first part of any prism, you know, when I immediately put it up to my camera, it like covers everything just because I'm trying to get a sense of what aspects I have around me that it's picking up to reflect. Uh, like I mentioned here, problem with workshops, tend to get a lot of feet uh, uh, because oftentimes the ground around you, behind you, beside you, can really serve as a great pattern. Not if people are standing on there. It looks weird to have floating feet or floating heads in the background. Perfect. Love it. Okay. Um, should we walk a little closer to the... Try one here. Where's Sarah? Do, 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 do. Awesome. Let this guy go by. The, uh, you're like certified celebrities. Oh. Everyone always looks, when there's a big crowd of people with cameras following you, it's like, this is what it's like, guys. What are you wearing? Who are you wearing? Oh, I love this. Can you come together really, really close? You can actually turn and face each other. I was also, <laughs> what are you wearing? I'm going to say, who are you wearing? Uh, and that is just the dumbest joke to try and pull off in a totally different country, by the way. Uh, I was also fairly jet lagged at this point. So yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sarah, sweep your hair a little over your ear. Good. Good. And uh, bring your waist in really close. You can kind of hug around. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Resume. Oh, it's okay. We'll we'll do it quick. Uh, Sarah, can you kind of look down over your shoulder, and then also lean in really close? Yeah, yeah. Get in there. You can kind of like yes, perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm just trying to frame them in the in the lines of the street here. I know I've said this and in, the big... uh, in, in a lot of deconstructions, but a lot of times people just eyes right at each other, foreheads touching. Good starting point. Super easy way to break up that uh, parallel, perfect, symmetrical. Pose is to just have, generally, I have the um, woman look kind of down across her shoulder just to see a little more of her face and keep the guy really, really close. And a lot of times when you give that instruction, people will not keep their heads really close, uh, especially the guy. He'll just kind of wa watch her and, and where she's looking, which can be fine, uh, especially if they're laughing or in you know expressing themselves in some way, being expressive, expressive with their face. But uh, I really like this as kind of a still quiet moment. So you really wanted them pressed right up against each other. 
White truck, I don't care about. I'll just get rid of that later if I have to. Ideally, the truck is so moody. Here, Ooh, so good. All right, guys, let's go. This, hold on, we can use this. Is this offensive or something? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is this it's not offensive? Right? No, it isn't offensive. <laughs> uh, key thing to consider. I've taken photos in front of many things, not realizing that is they're actually offensive and not appropriate for like couples portraits. Hey. Yeah. Well, that so one, oh, that one, oh, yeah. that, <laughs> that one. Vagina. Yeah, but oh, just the word is not. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Big fan. <laughs> um, oh, I have taken like photos with graffiti in other languages and it's like the most offensive <laughs> thing ever and somebody in a wedding dress it's like whoops uh okay uh can you guys come so i Ooh, love it's a little slanty uh, the, the variety that just the graffiti in general um looks really great here not usually the case a lot of graffiti is just uh you know signature looking word or something which is really gross this actually is almost like a mural uh anyway but the only reason it was going to be super useful was because the direction of the light, this dark graffiti hole in the wall, uh, as long as they're facing out toward the street, all the light is going to, hopefully, I knew at the time, uh, hit them in a way that it was a very flattering, soft quality of light in all the right directions. Uh, and then up against the darkness of the graffiti, uh, trending towards something that wasn't too uh, vibrant in color, uh, like I think I trend toward, yeah, this darker sort of purple black, um, it sucks out a little light from the side of them, adding a little bit more dimension. Would have been cooler if it had uh, darkened that side of them a little bit more, but I'm still overall happy with the direction. Let's see, Philip, here, facing that way. Just like that, perfect. Yep. Uh, can you kind of like hug underneath his arm, maybe get in really close? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. love that. I, Philip, can you keep looking that way? Uh, Sarah. Key thing to think about. I actually don't love uh, her lower hand there. The it would be her left hand, the very lower side. But I knew that wasn't going to be in the shot, so I'm not going to over-direct and correct for that, uh, even though I can see it with my own eyes, um, unless it looks like she's feeling awkward with that hand position, because I want people to feel comfortable. That comes across in their expressions and their face quite often. <laughs> so, uh, but what I really liked, um, I kind of meant for her to hug literally underneath his arm, like, un like through the arm crack and up, but she kind of wrapped around his shoulder in a way that I preferred. And uh, that's why I said, ooh, 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 <laughs> and kind of leaned into that. And I think I will dire direct her hand to curl around a little bit more. Uh, I kind of like you. Actually, can you kind of curl around his uh, shoulder? Yes, 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 but much nicer. Beautiful. Hold very, that, hold very that. subtle thing that changes it and makes it feel more like she's squeezing into him or hugging into him in a way that uh, really works, I think. Uh, let's actually replay that about 30 seconds so you can really see the difference. I don't know if I took pictures of her hand. I think I did. Uh, let's let's go back 30 seconds. Here's where her hand ki kind of was, just like holding his shoulder. That subtle curl around uh, pose adjustment changed everything. Uh, okay, uh, can you guys come... Ooh, it's a little slanty. Uh, let's see, Philip, here, facing that way. Just like that, perfect, yep. Uh, can you kind of like hug underneath his arm maybe, get in really close? Yeah, yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh. love that. I, Philip, can you keep looking that way? Uh, Sarah, I kind of like you. Actually, can you kind of curl around his uh, shoulder? Yes, 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 but much nicer. Of my Beautiful, hold that, hold that. Not a huge issue because they're just being pretty stoic and sexy looking, which is great. But I do like to be ready and shooting through any pose adjustment. Um, I stopped shooting camera down, got close. Maybe it was a language thing I don't quite recall. Uh, maybe I just forgot. But I like to make sure I'm shooting through any pose adjustment because that's the highest likelihood of when something either silly is going to happen or just something really natural. When somebody just first does the, the position change, they're going to look the most natural, hopefully, unless it's an awkward instruction. <laughs> or they, excuse me, they didn't understand you or something. I don't know why, but that was a good laugh. <laughs> that's perfect. Oh, that's okay. That's good. <laughs> All right, let's go. This is also a nice poor guy. I love it. No. As a photo, I would really like when people are mirroring each other. Um, uh, somebody cracked a joke off in the 
crowd, which was great. Nice to get them to giggle a little bit. But, uh, you know, they really had, oh, here, this, this guy, I forgot his name. He was very sweet. Um, <laughs> he made a nice joke, and I got a quick little snap of him. That was awesome. Let's see, when did I take this photo of him? I don't know why, but that was a good laugh. <laughs> that's perfect. Oh, that's okay. That's good. <laughs> All right, let's go. He was looking at me like, oh, poor guy. I love it. No, that was awesome. Okay. Me. So. <clears throat> That's it. That's a good 15 minute uh, run through of all of these. I'm going to switch now to actually show myself again. Boop. And we will go through just one or two edits, I think, just to show you the final, final touch. Now, the biggest issue is the <laughs> recording of my screen in the software kind of makes any actual edits a uh, little tough to take seriously for you. Uh, I'll paste in the description of this video on Patreon the, the, the final edits so you can see on your own screen what, the, um, what they're supposed to look like. Because color temperature and everything uh, through any, almost any recording app always looks too, too different and off from what I'm seeing in, in my editing. So uh, let's just pick, like, we'll start with this one. Um, let's reset it entirely. And I am editing using my uh, Gain Stage preset and my nice little Better Touch tool. If you're a longtime patron, hopefully you've implemented this by now. If not, definitely go take a look. But Better Touch tool is this app here that maps keyboard shortcuts to uh, Lightroom sliders or whatever you want, really. You can have it do kind of an infinite number of things. But when I hit the F key, boom, I can start adjusting exposure. Uh, I don't have to mouse around for things unless I'm adjusting something like crop or something that really demands, uh, you know, a mouse to make sense. So starting with gain stage, I almost always adjust my exposure to get the skin tone where I want it first. And then I adjust white balance to just kind of dial it in from there. It looks pretty good, actually. Um, and and then I drag in gradients, just like a billion of them to my, my heart's content. Uh, let's go back to import. So that is my, that looks pretty okay actually at, on import, but I'm going to just exaggerate the prism a little bit by adding a gradient with some blue, just a little bit of nice blue there. And then maybe a couple gradients just to draw your eye in a way that makes the, uh, see how that kind of shapes the light around the couple a little more? Just like a vignette would do or a brush, but a billion times faster than, than either. <laughs> um, this one, I did pop into Photoshop, I think, to get rid of the van. I'm not actually sure if I Photoshopped that. I probably did. Or if not the van, then this person standing over to the side. But let me make sure, oh, back to import. There we go. So just gonna crop it. Ideally like that. My preset imports with a bottom gradient always, very light. It's like 0.25 or something. It's nothing intense. Uh, that's just something I really like and as the default for the majority of my photos. But you don't have to do that. Um, I think a lot of people are confused by it and don't like it, but I really do. So, uh, And then the last one here. So import, got gain stage on, make sure it's all reset. Yep and bring up exposure and dial in a little bit of white balance on their face and just start clicking and dragging. This one I'm gonna be really, really dramatic with the gradients. There we go. Hey, Popcorn, saying hi to all the patrons. Stop, so annoying. All right, so, those are those photos. And then that was a quick edit. And because I shoot so static, especially for the more creative portrait stuff, it's so easy to sync um, those edits, uh, including complex gradients across a whole batch of photos. Um, even if they change their expression a little bit, as long as I don't move way off from what the original composition is, editing is just that fast, um, yeah, from an entire session. So thank you so much for your attention. I hope this all made sense. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back soon with a lot more. I've got a billion of these, as you've seen in all the reels I've been posting. Next week, I'm heading to Rome, serving, uh, providing that I test negative for COVID, which I should. It's a whole nother nine days until I leave. Um, and I have four sessions um, to shoot in Rome, which I'll be capturing 
a ton of footage for. And uh, I will be working feverishly to keep caught up with all the other sessions I have uh, to get through. If you have any questions at all or something you found interesting from this, I would love to know it. I always like hearing what people uh, get from these, the, the little things that you find most helpful. Uh, really helps me. Uh, yeah, so thanks everyone. We'll be back soon. Bye. Okay, so a uh, quick little follow-up. I mentioned seeing through the noise uh, earlier in the deconstruction. This is a perfect example of that. I don't have the chest footage from this because we had stopped shooting and I didn't honestly think I was gonna get much. And then I just made this happen uh, in a quick last minute, uh, two minutes, <laughs> that I didn't bother putting it on. But this is exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, all these little outlets, like uh, I guess those are lights or whatever, this little line for the panel behind them. I don't actually mind whatever these were, but all of it is just kind of visual clutter that, boom, um, I will set the photo up and take it with the full intention. And I guess the crop is a little different. Here we go. Here's the like out of camera, the full intention of getting rid of that stuff earlier. This might be a little over edited, but I don't really care. Uh, I, I, Photoshop did a great job removing these little uh, weird sculpture things, totally fine uh, to just like white it out completely. But getting rid of all those outlets was really priority number one. As long as the pose, the core composition, and the lighting looks good, that's, I'm, I'm game for anything. But I try not to do that too much. Uh, you will work yourself into an editing hole for eternity if you do that for every photo across an entire wedding day or something like that, for example. But these floating stairs are just too cool to pass this up. So I uh, just wanted to include this as well. Thanks everyone, bye.